Hello there again, and welcome to this third lesson of Unit 1, The Way We Are. And Lesson C, the third lesson, is a conversation strategy. And again, this is something that you will see every unit. By the third lesson, or the third lesson of every unit, is what we call a conversation strategy. It's always a new way to make your conversations better in English. It's one way that you learn um, to make the way you talk uh, better or to make it easier for you to express what you want strictly in conversation. And this one here is how to use uh, the present continuous with the, the adverb of uh, frequency always to describe people's habits. First, let me ask you a question. Which of these habits for you is the most annoying in a co-worker or classmate? If you have a classmate uh, who has one of these qualities, which one of these qualities would you say would be disturbing to you, you wouldn't like the most? Is it that she or he might smile all the time? Or that he or she might be disturbing people, criticizing others, wasting time, standing around and talking, you know, just not doing anything, or talking about people behind their backs. Now, I hope you understand that. I don't know about you, but I think the last one here is the worst. Someone who talks about people behind their backs, that's, that's not so good. It, it's a, there's a lot of there's a great deal of dishonesty in that. So you might want to, again, pause the video and tell yourself and tell me which one of these qualities um, you don't like. All right, so usually there's a recording here, but I'd like to read this exchange with you. Okay, so... I'm going to read my part, and then you pause when you hear my part, pause the video, read yours, so on and so forth. I'll let you go first, so go ahead and pause the video. You mean Jim? Well, yeah, he is, but he never does any work. He's always disturbing people. It drives me crazy, you know? He's always standing around and talking. Yeah, and he's not always criticizing people like that last guy. I mean, at least Jim's not like that, but like, he's always wasting time. There is a punchline to this little exchange. At the end, Max told Ellie, uh, you mean he was standing around not doing anything, just like what we're doing right now? And as you see, Ellie and Max are standing by the Xerox machine, the photocopying machine or Xerox machine, talking. So, yeah. Now notice how Ellie and Max use always and a continuous verb, could be in the present, could be in the past, to talk about things people do a lot more than is usual. Now, I'd like you to find examples of these. I'll find you the first, but I'd like you to find me the rest of those. Let me pull out my highlighter. Here it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, he is always smiling. Here we go. He is always smiling. The expression here, of course, or the verb is is smiling. This is a verb, smile in present continuous. I am smiling, you are smiling, he is smiling. And always. So he is, and you notice, always comes between the uh, auxiliary, is a verb to be, and the particle. Or the, uh, the, 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 the participle of the verb smiling so is always smiling he is always smiling can you find the rest i'll pause the video and let you find all the rest 
I f figured you already did that. He is always. He is always disturbing people. He is always standing. There's another one, right? He's not always criticizing. You can use it in the uh, in the negative as well. He's always talking about people behind their backs. He's always wasting time. You see, so all this, the these patterns, similar patterns that are repeated, in all of them, what you find is the subject, he or she, Bob, Jenny, whoever, I, and then the verb to be, for example, I am always doing something. Now, I use this structure to talk about a habit, a habit, something that I do repeatedly. All right. Uh, I'm always talking to people on the phone. It means most of, most of my time I'm holding my phone and talking to people. All right. So let's do some practice. Change the underlined parts of these sentences to describe habits. Use always and a continuous verb. Now, I'm pretty disorganized. Remember what pretty means, right? Just a little bit more than a little, right? I'm pretty, I'm fairly disorganized. I lose things. So it has to be, you have to change it to, I'm always losing things. I'm going to pause the video and do the rest or do the same thing to the rest of the sentences. This one, this one, this one, so on and so forth. Go ahead. All right, so I figured you've done that. The key. Number two, everyone in my family loves music. We are always singing together. My brother is really generous with his time. He's always fixing my computer. My father is a workaholic. Let me stop at this word. A workaholic, this word is very similar to alcoholic, of course. We know what that means, right? Someone who is addicted to alcohol. Workaholic is someone who is addicted to work, you know? They work too much because they want to, not because they are forced to. My father is a workaholic. He is always coming home late and he's always bringing work home with him too. My college roommate was really funny. She was always making us laugh. Now, why did I choose the past continuous here? Because the whole situation is in the past. My college roommate was, not is. You get that? So the situation is in the past. If it were in the present, I would have said, she is always making us, okay? She was always making us laugh, you know. She was always telling jokes. Here it is. She was always telling jokes. A friend of mine complains she's broke. All right, so a friend of mine is always complaining she is broke. But she's always buying herself expensive clothes. You see, so this is a habit on the part of this friend of hers or his. This lady is always complaining. It's her habit to complain she's broke. And by the way, if you're wondering what broke means, broke means someone who has no money. All right? doesn't mean poor. There's a difference. Broke is a person who is temporarily short of money. Temporarily has no money. Empty pockets. You say, I'm broke. But she is always buying herself expensive clothes. What do you understand from that? One of my friends is totally unreliable. He's always canceling plans at the last minutes. Now, if you haven't got these right, you can go back to this page, screenshot, and make sure every sentence checks. <clears throat> now, I'm going to add a something else, because every time we... Uh, we see uh, one of these conversation strategy uh, and this one this time we saw how to use 
always with the uh, continuous tense, either present or past, to talk about people's habits. Now, I hope you got that right. Now we're going to add a little bit extra on top of that. And it's the expression at least, at least. You can use the expression at least to point out the positive side of a situation. And this comes along with what we've just described about uh, people's habits. Now, sometimes those habits are not good. For example, you say, he's always, uh, he's always on his phone or he's always on his computer. Bob is always on his computer. All right, you got it? It's his habit to be on, on a computer and maybe it's not a positive thing that he's always on his computer. Like, you know, he's not paying attention to his surrounding or to the real people in front of him. But then you say, well, at least, at least he's not just playing. At least he's working on the computer. You got it? So I'd like you to connect these uh, language items. The previous one we've just seen and this one which we're about to see. Uh, at least, it says here, is one of the top 500 words and expressions in the English language, which means, which means people use it often. Example of the expression in use, he's always standing around and talking. Well, at least he's pleasant. I mean, even if he is standing around and talking all the time, at least he's not a, you know, uh, he's not an obnoxious person. He's not a bad person. He's a good person. He's a lovable person. You know, he's fun to have around. Now, the only challenge with at least is you have to know where exactly to use it in the sentence. Okay? It doesn't come at the end, doesn't come at the beginning. There's a very specific spot where you have to put it. I'm going to give you a chance to uh, say where you think we put at least and then we'll correct the exercise. Same as always. Pause the video read the sentence and put at least in the right place. Just say it, voice it out. I'll do the first one for you. My girlfriend's always running behind, but at least she calls to say she'll be late. But at least she calls to say she'll be late. Now I put at least here right after but. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Here. Now you can pause the video and do the rest. All right, let's do this. My best friend is always borrowing my clothes. She at least returns them in good condition. She at least returns them in good condition. You can also say at least she returns them in good condition. That's also, uh, that's also possible. At least she returns them in good condition. One of my classmates talks about himself a lot. At least his stories are always interesting. You can also say, his stories are at least always interesting. Okay? So at least can also come after the verb to be when we have the verb to be. My roommate sleeps all the time, but at least she doesn't snore, thank goodness. Now you remember, you should remember that if we have the expression but, of, or if, we, if you're using but, use at least right after but. And you say, but at least she doesn't snore. Okay? My parents and I see things differently. We don't have big fights or anything. Where do you think we might put at least? right in the beginning of the sentence. My parents and I see things differently. Each of us has their own perspective. At least we don't have big fights or anything. All right. All right, it says complete each conversation with always and a continuous verb and add at least to each response, meaning you're going to have to deploy and use all these both, not just both strategies that we've discussed, meaning always in the continuous verb, plus you respond with at least. I'll do the first one for you. My boyfriend is always checking his messages, even at the movies. Let me write it down. My boyfriend is always checking, you know, checking his phone, 
checking his phone, checking his messages, even at the movies. Oh, that's annoying. But at least he doesn't answer his phone during the movie, right? But at least. So pause the video, do the rest. Okay, my girlfriend is always telling jokes. My girlfriend is always telling jokes. She never takes anything seriously. Well, at least she has a good sense of humor. At least she has a good sense of humor. Or you can also say, but she at least has a good sense of humor. All right. Well, she at least, you can use it after the subject. Sometimes I'm so disorganized, I'm always losing things. I'm always losing things. All right. I'm always losing things like pens and stuff. Yeah, but at least you don't lose anything really valuable, right? My sister is always asking me for money. She asks nicely, so it's hard to say no. Well, at least she asks politely. You got it? Now, you have to move to the next step. And what's the next step? It's free practice. It's the ability to use these expressions however you want. Not just fill in the blanks and do exercises. No, this is the first step. The second and last step is for you to internalize these structures and use them whenever you want. You have command over them. And that's where this little exercise comes. So you have to talk about people with habits like these. Think, take every one of these and use it in a sentence for someone you know. If you don't know anybody who does one of these things, you can imagine a person but use it in a sentence and respond to that sentence using at least. I'll give you an example. You can pause the video and do the rest. You can, sometimes it could be harder, for hard for you to just think about uh, situations on top of your head and use these uh, structures automatically. So you might want to write them down before you voice them out. Texting. My sister is 16 years old. Uh, she's always texting, you know, she's always on her phone texting her friends. So I use the first strategy, always, she's always texting. But at least she doesn't text while driving, or at least she doesn't text in the classroom. Okay, so pause the video and use the same thing for chewing gum. You know what chewing gum is, right? Falling asleep in class singing or whistling you know what whistling is to go like this <whistles> whistle to whistle forgetting things telling jokes losing things looking in mirrors daydreaming daydreaming is uh when you are awake wide awake but your mind is elsewhere like physically you're in the classroom um but you're absolutely, your mind is absolutely not in the classroom. You're thinking of something else. It's called daydreaming. So you can do as many of these as you want. Um, if you do them all, it's better than do two or three. Let me see if we can uh, jump to do a, a very quick practice. Yep. All right. It says the people in this office don't work very hard. Look at the pictures and write what each person is always doing. Now, you have to tell me what each of these people is doing using, of course, the present continuous plus the uh, adverb frequency always. I'll give you the first one. I'll tell you what Jed is doing. Now, uh, it's 2.30, right? The clock here shows 2.30 and Jed 
is carrying his suitcase and he's leaving. So what does that mean? It, it says here in the beginning that this office, people work, don't work very hard. So Jed is always leaving work early. Oh, here it is. Jed is always leaving work early, meaning he doesn't do his entire shift. He doesn't complete his shift. He leaves early. Tell me about Reba or Reba. You can pause the video because I'm going to answer right away. I, I ask a question, pause the video, give me your answer and then match it with my answer. Reba is always listening to music. John is always sleeping. K.O. is always standing around eating chips. Jasmine or Yasmin is always talking on the phone. And Chad is always reading what seems to be a magazine to me, not even a book. All right. So we come to the end of this uh, session. And by the end of this session, you should be now able to uh, talk about people's habits very specifically using the continuous verb or the continuous tense of any verb plus the expression always. And you should be able now to use the expression at least in the right place when you want to indicate the positive side of something. So until I see you in the fourth lesson, stay well. Ta-ta.